Welcome back guys to the Java tutorial. We have finished uh, the main things that we were supposed to finish in the object orientation which is interfaces, inheritance, abstraction and uh, well yeah you know it. So uh, now let's move on to uh, graphical user interfaces which is GY. So well uh, in this tutorial what we're going to do is I'm I'm not going to begin another specific series on GUI. This is going to be a part of the Java series because because you, uh, you can't really make a program without knowing the GUI components. And if I make another GUI series, then there's uh, then there's not going to be a point of having a Java tutorial series. So well, yeah. So uh, this is a part of the Java tutorial, and uh, today I'm going to explain to you how to make a table in Java. Now I'm going to use the NetBeans GUI builder to, to, to do this. If you want to do it from the Edit Plus or from any program with Notepad or Notepad Plus Plus, then you can uh, do it yourself. But that's going to be a bit tough to do. So I would rather, I mean, I would advise you to use the NetBeans GUI builder because it's very, very easy and simple. To do that, I'm just going to make a uh, new package first of all. Just, uh, I don't know what to call it. Okay, table tutorial, and I'm going to add. And to add a new uh, window, you say new JFrame form. As you know, in Java, a window is a JFrame. And I'm going to call this, uh, what do I call this? Okay. Suggestions? Um, okay, table demo. Right. Well, it's not a very cool name, is it? Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to drag a table into this, and in uh, and uh, in that means you have a palette, and you have a table down here. The table is inside the screen controls menu. So I'm just going to drag it here, and I hope the position is correct. Okay. Now, I mean, if you have been using this, and if you hate this thing, uh, resetting things itself. Look at this. This is so naughty. This is just absolutely wrong. And so, because it's because. It's my computer and it's my layout and it's my NetBeans. Why are you interfering? So, well, I hate this kind of behavior. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, set layout, absolute layout, the best. So now I can I can drag it. Well, this thing creates a new scroll pin automatically, but I can drag this wherever I want, and there is no one to stop me now. So, well, yay. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag an OK button here, and this button will add the uh, tables inside. I mean, will add rows inside. And I'm gonna drag another button. And I'm gonna call this button Instantiate Table. And uh, let me just make this go on the left. And I'm gonna say Add Row. Add Row. Okay, now, first of all, uh, I'm gonna show you my way of doing this because I think it's, I mean, it's not bad, and you know, yeah, so you know that. Okay, now, there are two options while creating a table and adding data to it. First is, do you want to dynamically show data being added to the table? Mm, uh, I don't know, I don't think so, because that, because that is very processor intensive and that would be crazy to do and uh, that's that's what that's what kids do you know make make the things flashy for people so I'm not gonna do that what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna first populate the rows and then I'm gonna add the rows to the table which is the easiest approach to do that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in source and create a global variable global multi-dimensional variable two-dimensional variable to be precise of type object and this gonna, this is gonna contain data so I'm going to call it data, and uh, I'm just going to keep this like uh, null for now. Yep. And I'm going to create another string array, column names equals new. And I'm going to have the uh, two columns for now in here. Okay. So the column. Okay. As, as soon as you uh, click the instantiate button, it's going to go into design and double click this. So as soon as you click the instantiate button, what it's going to do is it's going to create column names. So it's going to say column names uh, equals new string of 
uh, two. Okay. Well, this is the easiest way to instantiate a string and raise the wall. Uh, I'm just gonna call that name and uh, um, country. Yeah. Okay, very very simple. And I'm gonna say object equal uh, sorry data equals new object, and it's gonna have uh, uh, zero rows for now. Uh, Let's put one default row, and it's going to have two columns. As we have two column names, it's going to have two columns. And uh, I'm going to say data zero uh, one. Okay, uh, no, 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 no. F leave that. As soon as you say, it's going to ask you for a name. So I'm just going to say data zero zero, which is the first cell uh, equals J option dot show input dialog and it's gonna say enter your name uh, and you import this thing data zero one this is the second cell of the first row equals j option paint dot show input dialog again and it's gonna say enter country yeah very very simple right now it's going to create a new table model. Now, the easiest way I think of creating a table model is just to add the table model object to the thingy. What do you call it? To the table. So, j table one dot uh, set model new. Now, the table model is basically an interface. So. You, uh, you don't want to say new table model because then it's going to create an anonymous class and it's going to implement all of the methods and it's going to be real messy. So, to avoid that, the, the job has a default table model. So, I'm just going to say default table model and it's going to have data and column names. As you see in here, it has a data, it takes a multi dimensional array of data and a single dimensional array of column names. So I'm just going to double click on that to have the, okay, that's perfect, very nice. And I'm just going to put this, and let's run this code and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to create an instantiate table, and it's going to, and it's asking me to enter my name. Okay, my name is Monthan. Okay, country, UK. And there we go, that's added. Now, important thing about this is that... It's a bit, you know, uh, it's a bit tough to for me to digest this thing. I mean, not really digest, but to understand this because because the problem here is that the the object array has been created, right? Now, if I create another object array, everything inside this array is going to get deleted. Yeah. Okay. So you can say J. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to create another temporary object array store everything that this array has into that array and then copy it over I hope you're getting this so I'm just gonna go in design I'm just gonna show what I just said and, it, and I feel it, it was confusing so uh, I'm just gonna go into this method and I'm gonna say object temp calls new object uh, okay so data Data. Okay, we don't know the uh, number of rows. I'm just going to say data dot length, and I'm just going to say uh, we know it's just two columns, so two. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in everything for int i i equals zero i less than data dot length i plus plus for int j equals zero j less than to j plus plus and uh, temp i j equals data i j so what basically we are doing here is we are copying the array to the new temp array now we want one row more so I'm gonna say plus one so this this loop is just gonna fill until to the length of the data array and it's going to leave out the last one blank 
So to do that, what I'm going to do to, to, to fill that array, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have is is going to ask you for another thing. So I'm just going to say I'm just going to copy this. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to copy all. Of it. Yeah. And the the position is the length of the last array data dot length. And same as this data dot length. Now, if you now if you remember, I mean, you must because well, well, we, uh, you've been a Java programmer since uh, um, I don't know how many days, but if you remember, the the array length is is not zero based. So if you have four elements, it's gonna the length of the array is four. However, the last element in the array is three. So in this, if you say data. Uh, uh, at position data dot length, that means the length is four. So four is the new one for us. How do we get this? I mean, so yes, yeah, so that's what we are doing here. And uh, let me run this thing. Oh, and one last thing. This is temp because temp has one more than the data, and data equals. Temp. I'm assigning temp to the data back to data. So we are. Ooh, Erasing the old array now, and we are replacing the old array with the temporary. And let's run this. Instantiate table. Ask me my name. Okay. Okay. Add row. Uh, John. Uh, US. So there we go. As you see, John US. Uh, another one. Okay. Uh, Sam. Australia. So there we go. That's how it works. That's how the table works. Now, if you want to delete an, an element from the table, what you can do is you can create an array that takes the elements until the point of deletion, and then it would, you know, then it would, uh, okay, uh, look, uh, and then it would um, stop. Then it would copy the rest of the elements inside the array. So replacing the element that has to be deleted. Uh, that is probably in the next tutorial because we are running out of time in this tutorial and if I create two big tutorials then it's, it, it takes a lot of time to, to upload and stuff so as you know so in the next tutorial I'm gonna show you basically how to erase elements from the table and how to edit elements from, from the table on the run okay so enjoy people and have a great one see you then bye, -bye.